In the last two, three years, since 2022, we've experienced the specific conditions on our Earth of La Nina weather pattern. We know that in the last two years, it was a little bit climate roller coaster for the country specifically around the Pacific, but around the world too. Record high sea surface temperatures and extratropical North and South Pacific was a signature from La Nina and a sign of global warming. The resulting atmospheric currents deliver a lot of rains, torrential rains, catastrophic rains to California in the north and places like New Zealand in the southwest Pacific. However, now we are switching and the long-term awaiting El Nina is officially here. Summer for Northern Hemisphere, winter for Southern Hemisphere of 2023 will be the time of transition and the atmospheric scientists telling us that this spring for New Zealand, Australia and South America or autumn for all the folks living in Northern Hemisphere will be the time when officially El Nino will come to place. Let's discuss what is going to us and specifically for some of the regions where we live in and what does it mean in the terms of the global climate on our planet. It seems like the conditions on our planet are getting worse. That's what everybody tells you in the news, your friends, people from other countries saying that they have the hottest summers, the coldest winters, the driest times, the wettest times, the biggest cyclones and the biggest flood, the strongest bushfires and so on. However, we know that on our planet these things happen constantly and they come and go with a different degree and effect on us. Today it's harder to hide this all because we all have intranet and in a second we can access any data from any part of the planet or any feedback or effect of particular people. Therefore it might seem that it's getting worse, but worse in comparison to what? On our planet we experience climatic patterns which are repeating and they're all cycles which are repeating every year or every two years, five years, seven years, every 11 years, every hundred something years and so on. From the bigger cycles such as like glaciations to smaller cycles such as the one we experience seasonally. However the effect and the weather condition in particular years will be different and they will have particular different effect on the people. Partially because we are living now everywhere and we occupy areas for a long time which maybe in the past we will readjust or leave and leave it to the extreme weather condition or maybe we will not build some buildings which are not sustainable anymore for changing climate in that particular area. And on top of it, we're putting this general climate change, which scientists are suggesting now will increase the polarity of these events. For example, if you have area, and we used to have a droughts there, but the droughts now will be particular harsh ones. Or if we experience some rainfalls, they will be heavier, and they will cause more flooding. Why is this happening? Well, first thing, when you're changing the average temperature on our planet, and specifically we have the melting of the poles, particular northern pole is getting warmer, faster than the rest of our planet, due to the no more ice cover on the northern pole. You have less differential temperature between equatorial or tropical areas and the poles. Therefore, you will have less driven normal patterns of circulation of ocean in the atmosphere around the planet, causing the leveling, the gradient between the areas. Therefore, when you have on top of it changes in circulation on the ocean, seasonal one or pattern one's oscillation like and so in Pacific, you will have more extreme effect on the areas around that. And let's look in one in particular the El Nino, which are coming in 2023 now and probably will stay with us in 2024.
The El Nino and La Nina, it's this fluctuations from the normal pattern in the circulation in Pacific. If you look on our globe, we'll see that we have very prevailing western winds. We call them trade winds. Back in the day, they helped to explore and discover Americas, explore the Pacific to local people and to Europeans. And these western winds, they blow in because of the winds in general coming from poles towards the equator and because our planet rotates eastward, they blow into the west. And of course, if you're moving the big chunk of atmosphere around the equator constantly, it will cause the surface and up subsurface temperature changes in the moving of the waters of the ocean, which we called currents of the ocean. See my video about the ocean currents. When I talk about this in detail, and because we have the continents around the planet, not symmetrically arranged, we will have different responses of the system to these Coriolis winds, the trade winds. And we notice that every two, five, seven years we have these variations from the normal. For example, the normal is when the western winds bring in the warmer waters towards the East Asia. We have the monsoon seasons in all the Asia, the India, of course, and all the other countries. And we have the warmer waters uh, leaving the areas from South America and Central America. And as a result, the colder waters from the bottom of the ocean replacing it. You will have drier periods in South America and a little bit wetter in uh, Asia. Therefore, you can have extremes when you have more warm waters moving towards the west. And that's what we experienced in the last couple of years. It's called La Nina. See my video about is 2021 or 2022 La Nina years. And you have other extreme when opposite these winds weakened, the current weakened, and the water, the warmer water stays around the Americas. It's a little bit more stagnant period. And you have dry periods in Asia, different situation for New Zealand drier, colder temperatures for New Zealand, maybe droughts and bushfires for Australia, and wetter conditions for Western South America and Central America. Of course, they're going to have effect on North America, and as we're proving now, scientists around the planet, that and for the Africa and Eurasia itself. Because on our planet, everything interconnected. So right now, we're transiting. And how people know that we're transiting from this devastating La Nina, what we experienced, to El Nino. Well, first of all, we definitely know we had La Nina in the last couple of years, and it was unusually prolonged one. It's kind of started between 21 and 22, and it's continued now till May 2023. And for example, in Australia, we had floods last year, rivers coming out of the borders. We had a lot of rain in North Island of New Zealand. We have cyclones hitting New Zealand one by one. So the shift in the cyclone formation in the Western Pacific happened. And it also had effect on the North America. For example, we know the Central and South America experienced a lot of droughts at that time, abnormal droughts. And we have more rain in Northern West America and the coastal areas, similar like here in New Zealand. Therefore, you have this general effect on the planet. Now we're switching and the scientists have the thing that they call the gradient. They're basically measuring the western equatorial Pacific waters and the eastern equatorial Pacific waters. And they're comparing the difference. And the bigger the difference, the gradient, the more you're going to La Nino or El Nino. And the last, the more you're transiting. So right now they measure the lowering of the gradient and it's mean that there's not much moving of the waters happening and we are getting into El Nino. And we know that La Nina was a little bit too long. However, there's no rules. The observed record since 50s of La Nina and El Nino circulations shows that it might vary from year two, three, up to five years. And we see that the surface temperatures, the highest on the record at the tropical Pacific, abruptly become too warm. 
Evidence of imminent arrival could be seen last year in subsurface ocean temperatures, the warm waters building up in the Coral Sea and the Western Tropical Pacific. So what the sea surface temperature shows that we see the comparison from mean temperatures for December 2022 and May 2023. We see a transformation throughout the central tropical Pacific, with the coastal El Nino of Peru and Ecuador strongly evident. In the eastern North Pacific, we have a modest cooling and train of storms that come to west coast of the United States and northwest Australia. So what will it mean for us people living around the Pacific and the rest of the world? Usually the warmest years in the terms of global mean surface temperatures are the later stages of El Nino. For example, in 2016, world's warmest year on the record, but because of the very strong El Nino event. What will happen in 23 could beat this record, and even in 2024, but it's just the predictions we just extrapolating or of what happened, what we measure in the past and what might happen in the future. Scientists right now see that the climate change doesn't have much effect on ENSO, but it's just make it more extreme. The main effects of El Nino, of course, will be serious social and economic impact. Droughts, floods, heat waves. They can disrupt agriculture, fisheries, health, energy and air quality, for example, due to the bushfires. And globally, El Nino caused more droughts than, for example, in La Nina times. They were intense and it set up more wildfires around the world, especially in Australia, Indonesia and Brazil. We know that after finishing towards the end of the cycle of El Nino 2019-2020, Australia fires affected basically whole southern hemisphere. At the same time, torrential rains will be heavier and more risks of flooding in places in South America like Peru and Ecuador. Where, for example, for us in Australia and New Zealand, we'll have a little break from those heavy rains. Wet conditions will be observed also in California and Southeast United States. New Zealand expected to be colder at that time, and usually it's categorized as a bad effect on the country. Do you know, you know the water warms rising to the surface in the Western Pacific, pushing heat into the atmosphere? For about 18 months, we predict dry conditions in the north and east of both North and South Island, with more rain than usual in the western areas, particularly the west coast. New Zealand is one of the few places in the world that become cooler during the El Nino. For example, 2022 was the warmest year of record for New Zealand because of prolonged La Nina effect. During the Nino, New Zealand cooled off a little bit and we experienced southwestern flow during the June and July. So these subtropical lows were reduced. We have a little bit more highs all around New Zealand. North Island will experience less torrential rains. In the South Island, West Coast conditions become more better. There will be more moisture brought from the Indian Ocean. In Australia, there could be high risks of recurring bushfires and it might affect New Zealand by brought from the weather winds over the Tasman. Next summer, there might be experienced even some droughts around the New Zealand, but they should be reasonably manageable due to the geography of the New Zealand country. There will be more droughts all around the world and more rise of the temperature. Already in 2023, globally, we experienced 0.3 degrees higher average temperatures than the same time in the last year. In the Southeast Asia and Indonesia, people might experience more droughts and wildfires, and there will be consequences in South America and Africa too, especially with the risk of increasing cholera and other diseases. Indian government already warning the people about the potential droughts. 
In the East Africa, we'll be experiencing wetter than normal conditions. In the drier areas, we will be the South Central Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, or Botswana. Because of shifts of warm waters, in Asia, we experience more droughts. The wetter conditions will go to the East Pacific. We can look from the experience, for example, Singapore was the driest in February 2010 due to the El Nino effect there in 2010. What will happen in North America? North America usually affected from October to the March for the winter. And the Canada have milder winters than normal, with the exception of Eastern Canada, the effect won't be so dramatic. In the United States, will observe wetter than average conditions in the drier conditions in uh, Pacific areas like Hawaii or inland Ohio Valley, Pacific Northwest and the Rocky Mountains. In the Central America in particular, Mexico will experience strength of the wind in the wakes of cold fronts between October and February. South America directly affected by that, and we'll see general increase in rainfall. Major flooding might be expected in Peru and Ecuador, and less nutrition available in the coastal area, and less fishes, which might affect the social and economical situation in the countries. In the south of South America, Brazil and Argentina will be wetter as well, might be even experience some snowfall there. Dry and hotter weather will be in Amazon River Basin, Colombia and Central America. What you might experience in Europe, it's a bit controversial than the Europe, more depends on North Atlantic conditions and what's happening in the polar region. However, we know that whatever happening in Pacific, it will affect global climate. And as I said in the beginning, depends on the situation and conditions already right now, it will have more dramatic or more smoother effect. We can look at the patterns which we already experience, which we know in observed years, and extrapolate it for future. That's mostly how the climatologists work. However, we all will hope that the El Nino won't be so dramatic for global climate. Although we're warned about the extremes in my coast, we'll be prepared for it and help each other and the hope for the best. I hope you like this video. Share it with anyone who might be interested. Subscribe and I'll see you soon.